We have several special symposia uh, at Clio, which I want to highlight. Uh, I like most one uh, symposium on quantum communications uh, for the reason that this field is really one of the fields where we can show that uh, right now uh, there are very fundamental uh, topics discussed in quantum communication. On the other hand, there are products out there. So uh, we plan to span with this symposium the entire range from fundamental physics uh, up to the very applied sciences. So one other uh, symposium, as I mentioned before, is uh, on broadband spectroscopy. Uh, there are all these new broadband coherent sources coming out, and there are new, new ways uh, utilizing these sources for uh, trace gas sensing, for example, where you don't want to uh, dial in in the specific absorption line of only one single molecule, but you more uh, want to more see an overview spectrum where you can uh, detect very small amounts of trace gases. And there are two competing ways to doing this. Uh, one is using coherent techniques and one is using more traditionally uh, uh, techniques using just uh, incoherent broadband sources. We have um, one symposium on UV LEDs and UV lasers. Uh, these are novel semiconductor devices and t traditionally in semiconductors you would have always first the LED device and spe uh, a little bit later it will develop into a laser so I'm very excited to see the newest work on, on these very short wavelength semiconductor uh, lasers there. I'm uh, looking forward to uh, attend a special symposium on uh, broadband spectroscopy. And uh, so it consists of uh, several invited talks and then uh, also com uh, several contributed talks will be transferred from the uh, contributed paper to the symposium. And at the end, uh, several sessions uh, will be going on. I'm looking forward to attend this uh, symp symposium because that, uh, you know, that the spectroscopy is a, a traditional uh, field which has long history. But uh, recently, it uh, experiences a tremendous uh, improvement in this field uh, because of frequency comb technology. And now, uh, using the frequency comb, uh, uh, extreme uh, broadband spectroscopy with ultimate precision with high sensitivity uh, can be uh, possible uh, in the range, uh, so the, in the frequency, uh, so spectral region uh, starting from extreme UV to uh, terahertz. So it's really amazing technology. And then uh, it can uh, uh, open up a uh, uh, wide variety of application fields, such as medical diagnosis and uh, environmental gas sensing and uh, basic science and so on and so on. Well, the aspect of metamaterials has stayed at a very high level. And that also holds true for nanophotonics and plasmonics, two very much related areas. And this year we also have a special symposium that covers particular aspects, this symposium on hybrid quantum um, nanoplasmonic structures that go towards active structures. That's a trend in, in plasmonics as well as in metamaterials. Many of these structures still um, suffer from losses and we somehow have to get rid of these losses. And the idea is to bring active materials in there. So we have an entire symposium and I think quite some exciting stuff in that symposium. A symposium of nanobiophotonics is a joint symposium this year. Uh, it's a joint symposium between, obviously, application side and fundamental side. And what we try to do this, this year, uh, which is different from, from prior years, in previous years, nanobiophotonics was confined to the application side. And one to one, what we want to show and demonstrate in this particular conference this time, that there are plenty of fundamental problems which needs to be taken care of, investigated uh, in, nano, in biophotonics. So that's w that is why this year it is specifically joint symposium between application side and fundamental side, because we want to capture uh, the audience which is interested in fundamental science and show them that there are plenty of room in, 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 bi in biological sciences where they can apply their knowledge and Elan, <laughs> I would say.
there is a special symposium on the quantum Zeno effect. Everybody knows the Greek myth. You cannot walk across the room because before you can do that, you have to walk halfway across the room, etc. And in quantum mechanics, there is this well-known description of measurement that says once you interact with something, it changes forever and you can't go back to it. But that's not true if you only partially interact or if you interact very weakly. And now the question becomes, if you interact very weakly and therefore you don't change it, can you do that again and again and again and how many times can you get away with it? And the answer seems to be, you can continue forever. There's no limit to this. So the quantum Zeno effect is a fascinating subject and, and mind-boggling. And there's no doubt in my mind that it, it focuses on some of the weirdness of quantum mechanics, much like the Einstein-Podolsky-Rosen of action at a distance and so forth.